Hi, I'm Grady Colain in the CapeCod.com News Center, and welcome to Sunday Journal. I'm joined today by some special guests from Habitat for Humanity. Do you mind introducing yourselves for our listeners? Sure. I'm Sandra Harrison. I'm the Volunteer and Community Relations Manager. Hi, I'm Tara Cronin. I'm the Director of Resource Development. Awesome. Thank you both for joining me for this conversation. Thank you. We're Thank you for here. having us. So there's a lot that is going on with Habitat for the Summer Season, just because it's it's busy across the Cape, and that includes for you guys as well. We want to start first and foremost, though, before we get into things like the Ride for Homes upcoming and the Restore locations and some of the other work going on. Just for those who aren't familiar, what is it that Habitat for Humanity does? Oh, great. I'll take that. So sure. we're in our 35th year. So we've been around for 35 years. We've built homes in all 15 towns on the Cape. What we do is we build affordable homes with local families and volunteers. And then when the houses are done, the families purchase them. The average price of a a Habitat home last year, the year before, was probably around Mm $170,000. So they own those houses and um, much, much better price than the normal. What are we looking at these days? Six, seven hundred thousand dollars for the average home. Mm-hmm. So we want to keep these. We want to keep our working families on the Cape. It's so important, and we want to have a great home ownership program. And we just think Habitat's the way to do it. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, we've been checking out some of those prices as part of news stories. And I think Paul Nitzwicki, the CEO for the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce, recently advised uh, Barnstable County Commissioners that housing is one of the major obstacles facing the local economy as of late, just workforce housing, everyone having to commute over the bridge. Um, so it is interesting to see you guys and your, your angle to solving that problem. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. We have, um, just so you know, we also have Right now, we're working on 10 homes in Falmouth. Mm-hmm. What do we have? Three homes in Sandwich, yep. two in Chatham that we're finishing up, and we're going to be starting houses in Brewster, Wellfleet, Dennis, Yarmouth. So um, just anybody who's interested, definitely check out Habitat for Humanity, uh, HabitatCapeCod.org. Check out the website and look at the upcoming builds. So we have a lot coming up. All right. Awesome. Uh, so as well, I just wanted to dive into some of those builds specifically. We have the vet builds that are going to be here as well. Oh, but the, actually, before we get to that, I'm trying to go in order of the date specifically. Uh, for the 14th, we do have, it is the vet builds. Uh, do you mind elaborating more on what that is for people who aren't familiar and just explaining more about maybe how people can help out? Sure. So our upcoming build is Brewster and the deadline is August 14th. So we're looking for families to apply for these two three-bedroom homes. So we have two three-bedroom homes that are going to begin probably in October in the fall, but our deadline is August 14th. So anyone in need of an affordable home, go on HabitatCapeCod.org and apply for that house. You can see the income guidelines. You can see the partnership agreement, just everything you need to do to apply for the houses. Volunteers can sign up online, but we won't need volunteers for that build until the fall when we get going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's estimated to start like October, November. Uh, We'll definitely have communication through our digital marketing um, channels to ask for volunteers Mm -hmm. and get the public excited for the build. And it is, like you said, Grady, um, what, so it's two houses. One house is a you know regular Habitat house. Anybody can apply. And the other house is designated a vet preference. So we had a really, really great group of volunteers that raised a lot of money to fund the building of this house. And they did it in memory of their friend Bob Harding, who was a World War II vet, who was a longtime volunteer of ours. He volunteered until he was 95 years old. Wow. And they asked that we make this house a vet preference. So that means... Um, we prefer a vet to live in this house, so we need veterans in their families to apply. And it can it, all kinds of family, you know, makeups are good too. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, a typical family. It could be like me and my husband and my child and my dad, who's a vet. So mm-hmm. uh, just look at the website and definitely apply, especially if you have a vet in your family. Sure, awesome. Um, as well, we have the uh, excuse me, the Ryan for Homes event, which is something that's going to be coming up in September. Um, but I believe registration is already open now. Do you guys mind elaborating more? on what that event is, how it benefits the efforts that you guys are doing? Sure. So Ride for Homes is a ride that starts at a toxic museum uh, trading post in Bourne. We always and struggle with the name of toxic. I always, <laughs> yes, always struggle. Um, there's three scenic routes um, that riders can choose from. The, it's a registration fee of 25 with a fundraising minimum of 300. Uh, we have riders right now across the board ranging from you know they've already started fundraising to someone we have over 5,000 currently um, we're at 40,000 right now for the ride and our goal is to be over 80,000 mm-hmm. and um, in funds raised because it's just a great way to raise money for affordable housing it's also a fun family event we'll have a celebration uh, barbecue and entertainment after mm-hmm. um, 
and we're just hoping that we see the community, riders, and make it fun for everyone. Um, the 12 mile ride is along the canal. Um, the 20 mile ride is sorry, around the canal <laughs> and through Bourne, and the 40 mile ride is right through um, Woods Hole and back. So it's great. You don't have to be a pro rider. You can be someone that's just starting out, um, someone who, a child, or it could be um, adult riding. So we welcome everyone. And it's Sunday, September 17th. So I feel like the weather's going to be beautiful. The traffic's going to be beautiful. <laughs> um, it's great for the whole family. It's a bike ride along the Cape Cod Canal. And mm. it really, it's our sixth annual ride. And we would really like to see a lot of local families come out to help other local families. So help us fundraise for our programs. Our houses cost, so we sell them, as I mentioned, like last year, they're around $170,000, but they mm. cost about 350000 for us to build. Even mm-hmm. though we use volunteers as labor, it still costs a lot of money to build these houses. So we do a lot of fundraisers all year round to um, make up the difference. And the Ride for Homes is just, it's such a great family friendly fun event so mm-hmm. please come out and um, check out the website to learn more mm-hmm. and it's ra- uh, rain or shine um, the <laughs> check-in starts at 7 a.m. and then routes start at 8 a.m. with the uh, 12 mile starting at 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. Great efforts as well to bring in the whole family with the shorter and longer routes. Though even the 12 miles sounds a little daunting to myself, but I'm not particularly uh, as much of a cyclist. Um, but that is great to know. Uh, so you guys have all kinds of efforts as well with like the restore locations and the uh, deconstruction teams. Uh, do you mind, is there either of you that can elaborate more on what those locations are and some more about the deconstruction? Do you want to take it? For sure. Yeah. So our resources are located um, in Falmouth and Yarmouth. Yarmouth is on White's Path and Falmouth at um, Gifford Street Extension. Mm-hmm. Um, we welcome everyone to stop in because you will leave with something that you may need or may not need. Um, they're always um, getting different products in stock. Uh, we have donations that come in of We can have people sign up online to schedule a pickup, Um, but there's always fun stuff and there's events um, throughout the year at the restores. Um, You know, you can get like a lock, you could get a table set, like there's so much you can choose from. My whole house is restore. So I have, (laughs) what do I have? My couch is a beautiful white leather couch that I got it from the restore. And I was like, the dog can go on the couch, the kids can go on the couch. I don't care because this couch is probably seven years old. (laughs) So we have couches, uh, kitchen tables, cabinets, appliances. So bunk it, beds as well but so just for the people who might not be aware so these are all things that have been have been donated from previous builds or from yeah. re- renovation leftover or yeah. stuff like that everybody living on the cape so anybody listening if you have some furniture that you'd like to um, get rid of that's in good condition you just email the restore go to their website restorecapecod.org and you can upload pictures and they will actually come get it and mm-hmm. then so it's home goods and it keeps them out of landfills and it raises a ton of money for habitat. So if you shop, donate, um, anything at the restore, you're helping fund our homes. Yep. And our program that we started about a year and a half ago mm-hmm. is the decon program. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So our um, deconstruction team, um, you would fill out a form online, and they would come to your home to do an intake to see what you want to donate. So that could be kitchen cabinets, appliances, furnishings. Um, they'll see what condition it is in. We're looking for new or you know gently used or well loved uh, materials, and then once they'll say yeah, they'll take that or no, this is a little bit too old for us but you know we'll we'll look at what you have and um the team will then schedule a day that works for you or a day say if you're having a renovation planned plan around that with your builder um and then we'll come in we'll remove all that um items that you want to donate and then it gets resold in our restore and it goes back to affordable housing keeps that out of landfills um so like in the fall if you guys all start to remodel and it's time to like redo our kitchens don't throw away your cabinets don't pay your contractor to take your cabinets away give us a call uh we'll save you the money because Mm -hmm. it does cost money to to dispose of these it costs money to take them down habitat will come take your cabinets down and sell them to other people we recently had a set that were sixty thousand dollar cabinets they were gorgeous and the homeowner had just put them in and they had a little leak you know and then because there's a leak you your insurance will pay to redo the cabinet. So mm-hmm. they donated them to the restore. So somebody got $60,000 cabinets that were brand new for around $6,000. And a lot of them are much cheaper than that. They can be $1,500. Um, it's a great program. I think we probably have taken down like maybe 200 sets and probably raised $200,000. It's been very, very successful. I think 
because on the Cape, people are remodeling a lot, you know, and, yeah. and people have different, you know, locations. And it's really a great program for us. And it, like Sandra said, it keeps it out of the landfills. Mm-hmm. Uh, very recently, we actually had uh, Ryan Castle, who is the uh, the head for the Cape and Islands Association of Realtors. And we were talking about uh, how exchanging, how hot the market is, essentially. I assume every time a house changes hands is an opportunity for essentially there to be remodeling done and some kind of reconstruction. So yeah. I imagine big business as of late for that location. That's why we're in the perfect location for this Mm because so many, especially with all the houses being sold last year and the year before, it's it's just a win-win situation for everybody on the Cape. Mm -hmm. So as well, uh, just to kind of talk a little bit more about the the business side of things, uh, do you mind talking more about like, um, you already mentioned as well how expensive things have uh, gotten as of late. Is is that some new estimates? Have supply chain issues with recent years been kind of a a challenge and that's kind of prompted more things with the restore locations? Are there other ideas floating around for how to balance out some of the costs of just the sheer supplies? Well, we're really lucky. We have a lot of local businesses that donate. Their, you know, well, obviously we have lots of business supporters and we've mm-hmm. got great in-kind, like we were just talking the other day about Dean Frazier, Frazier Construction. They donate all our roofs. Mm-hmm. Certainty donates all the shingles for the roofs. Uh, Boston Granite Exchange donates our granite countertops. I, I'd like to just mention our houses are gorgeous, too. If anybody hasn't seen a house, you definitely want to see a Habitat house. They've got bamboo floors, granite countertops, solar panels, super energy efficient Um, and that's great because our homeowners will have like a negative electric bill but yeah so we do uh, lots of local businesses help us keep our costs low but we do have to pay for stuff we have to pay for our landscape and we have to pay a lot of money for infrastructure Mm -hmm. and you know everybody's cost of living's gone up so everybody's prices have gone up and supply chain issues that's sometimes is an issue but you know we're still here we're still building we're right on track where we want to be we can have a little bit of delays but it's okay that's also the nature of construction yeah so we're rolling with it we've learned to pivot (laughs) (laughs) and that's the the words of the past few years has been pivoting learning to pivot um reimagined is another one of the words that have come over the past few years and i'm gonna have to keep in my back pocket um so as well how how important is the community outreach talking more about the people the community building i mean 35 years has also been a, a time to build build culture, essentially. Um, So can you speak more about the social aspect, the volunteer aspect, building the community angles? Yeah, so we have a wonderful group of volunteers. Um, We have, you know, every day, you know, Tuesdays and Saturdays, we have our build sites. Mm -hmm. Um, So those are all volunteer driven. Um, They have their own, like, culture on sites that, you know, when people volunteer, um, they might be you know, just moved to the Cape, they're looking for friends. Um, so volunteering, you know, they meet new people. Um, they're, you know, working towards a great cause, affordable housing. Um, you know, we have volunteers of all types. So it's not just the build sites, Grady. Um, we have office volunteers that help review applications for those applying to the home ownership program. We also have our family partner program. So when those um, uh, home ownership applications, um, those for Brewster, those two homeowners are chosen. Um, they'll have two family partners per homeowner to guide them through the process of, okay, financial literacy, what to do to your home, how to take care of it. So the, the home ownership applicants are um, set up for su- success. Um, so, you know, those are some aspects of volunteers. Also our restores, um, that's where a lot of flexibility happens with volunteering because mm-hmm. um, our restores are open Monday through Saturday. So volunteers can pick up a shift. Um, they, you know, help sell the product. Um, we have a gentleman um, in Yarmouth, we call him the <laughs> furniture surgeon because he, <laughs> he makes sure that the product that comes in you know, if it has some sort of damage or needs to be reinforced, he's fixing that so we can sell that mm-hmm. at our store. Um, Is that Fran? Yes. Oh, we love Fran. Fran <laughs> yes. So. Um, and, you know, I always like to mention there's a woman in our sandwich build that she wanted to learn how to shingle. And she, no. she's not, she didn't come to the build site having experience in construction. So um, she learned how to shingle. She, You know, every time I see her shingling, I'm like, she has a glow on her. Having the best She's time. She's so happy. And that's another thing is if you don't have experience, that's fine. We'll teach you how to build. We'll teach you the resources you need to be successful volunteer at the free store or reviewing applications um, or, you know, helping us with a te- uh, events or a deconstruction team. We also have people that are experienced that they, you know, just retired or they're working and they want to donate their time. Um, so we, we look for all people of all, um, you know, experience level. Mm-hmm. We actually have a huge 
huge um, opportunity. Um, Habitat for Humanity of Cape Cod is a beneficiary of the New England um, endurance events. And um, when we have people volunteer at, as Habitat volunteers at their events, we actually get um, funding donated mm-hmm. to us. So if you're interested in volunteering at their um, Hyannis Triathlon on September 9th, their swim run in Wellfleet and True on the 16th, and the um, Gut Triathlon in Brewster on the 23rd of September, uh, when you register volunteer, remember, put in Habitat Cape Cod and Habitat that will benefit from that. You have a really good memory. <laughs> I, no, I typed no in an email here. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is great. It sounds like there's a lot of community outreach from, from local businesses as well as other organizations between the crossover fundraisers as well as the local businesses donating. Um, has that been a positive reception? Was it? Sl- I, don't, I don't think... Were either of you here for the, the original 35 years? I, I don't believe so. <laughs> no. Um, but can you talk about wh- over your experience maybe how things have changed in the years that you have been there for and maybe some of the new ways businesses are helping out now? I, I can. Um, so, yeah, we've been around for 35 years. And we actually, we have our anniversary this year and we're, we have an annual meeting and we're doing a celebration. We're celebrating our volunteers who have hit 30-ish years Mm -hmm. because record keeping wasn't great back then for volunteers, but we still actually have quite a few that started 35 years ago that are still here. And what's interesting was it was very, very grassroots in the beginning, like just cool people, like, let's go build a house, hop in my car, drive down, let's, you know, they did a wonderful job. They really got us going. And I know for many years before I got there, um, they were building one or two houses a year. It was a much slower, smaller. Of course, the Cape wasn't in such a huge crisis. Mm. But what has happened in the past 10, 12, 15 years is we've just grown exponentially. We have a large staff now. We've got 30 staff members. We've got con- you know site leaders that are staff, restore directors that are staff, everyone in the office. So we've just built and grown. And that's why we're able to do the you know 22 houses last year that we did. So we've, we've just gotten bigger and um just building more but the, the heart's still there you know that grassroots just love for your fellow man and wanting to get everybody into a safe decent affordable house is still always our goal and then you know what I wanted to mention too is when you talked about business spot um, partnerships is I just wanted to give a little shout out to cam cam uh, appliances came to us a couple of months ago and I, everyone's so awesome to Habitat. We just we just have so many good friends, but Cam actually reached out to us and we went down there for a meeting and they said, we want to donate all your appliances mm-hmm. for all your upcoming houses. So we've got that great new partnership with them and we just, we couldn't be more grateful. We couldn't be more grateful for all the support of our, you know, our friends in the community. It, is, it really mm-hmm. is a community organization. It's like mm-hmm. you say many hands to build a house. That's kind of how Habitat is. is it takes your donors, it takes your volunteers, it takes your home buyer partners, uh, the staff, all of us working together on the same team to get these beautiful, beautiful houses and get these beautiful families in their houses. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a lot of uh, different uh, demographics can get involved, especially between some of the people that are maybe new to the Cape and just want to find some friends, as you mentioned mm-hmm. before. Um, I imagine a lot of older retired contractors that maybe moved out here when there was the development boom in the 80s and 90s as well, who just stayed and aged up, essentially. Uh, Give them something to pass on some of their skills, essentially, especially for those who want to learn how to shingle. Um, Maybe (laughs) that'll be something on my bucket list at some point. So when you uh, retire, when you get old, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of people who never did construction that worked in an office, Mm -hmm. and this is fun for them. They're like, I retired to the Cape, and I want to go do some construction. Now I build houses. Yeah. And Uh, then uh, we uh, also, what I think is kind of cool is, especially like our Chatham build and sandwich builds and Falmouth everywhere, but we have neighbors kind of wander down like, what are you doing? How do I get in? involved and it's cute because you show up to the we'll show up to the site to just visit and they'll just be a neighbor helping build um (laughs) so it's just a great way to like just you know know, build that that neighborly love everybody can participate but you have to sign up online sure understandable gotta be safe gotta make sure everybody's all accounted for yeah um is uh so what about yourselves are have you guys been out there on the sites have you swung some hammers driven some nails do you have any new skills you've developed over the past few years i can tell you i did shingling once so i did um it was actually really really fun i did it um in brewster and i climbed up on the scaffolding and i have to say i was a little surprised so One, I thought I was going to be really, really good at it right away, and I wasn't. Mm. And what's great about Habitat is when you're new, probably everybody, but they pair you with someone called a crew leader who's a teacher. So their job is to make sure you do it right. So I climbed up on the scaffold, and I'm nailing the things, and I'm not doing it right. He's taking them out. (laughs) He's making fun of me. He's making me put them back in right. So it was great. By the end of the day, we had, you know, a 
three or four rows and they were done right and they were beautiful and I, I did them and I was really proud of myself. But the hardest part was getting off the scaffolding. <laughs> I didn't mind the little bit of a height. I was probably only six feet in the air. But just when you haven't done it in a while, to climb down. <laughs> oh, it's so, easy to get off the scaffolding. It's just it's a bit pa- painful the way I'm possibly imagining. Um, to get off the right way, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've done a little bit. But as staff, we don't really get out there to build too much. But I can let you know. So I have an interesting little bit of a background um, with Habitat. Is So I've been there with just seven years. And... 15 years ago now, I bought a Habitat house as a resale. So mm-hmm. these ho- so before I worked there, these houses, anybody listening should always know this, is the fa- first of all, the families apply and it's a long, grueling application process. Mm-hmm. Secondly, they buy the, they build them and then they buy them. The houses, as we mentioned last year, were around $170,000. So they purchased these houses. Third, they're deed restricted. So that means you can't flip it. Nobody can say, so our, we just said someone had, um, What's that called when they talk about the value of the house the town had done? Appraisal. The houses are appraised at $600,000, but mm-hmm. they can't sell. You can't just get a Habitat house and then sell it for 600000 If you decide to move on, that's great. That's fine if you want to move out and sell your house. But it goes back to someone else who needs it. And 15 years ago, I was working probably two or three jobs, another nonprofit, waiting tables, babysitting, whatever I was doing, it, moving from apartment to apartment and saw affordable house online and bought a Habitat house as a resale. So my family wouldn't be here without that affordable house. Mm-hmm. And that's very, it's very personal to me. I really understand, you know, what these families are going through and how important it is to keep them on the Cape. And I love that, that the house is always affordable. Another great thing is I don't want to um, cloud it too much, but <clears throat> when you get a Habitat house, so if there's affordable rentals, right, mm-hmm. every time you get a raise, your rental goes up, your rent, your daycare, your sliding. I went through all of this. I had sliding scale daycare and sure. health insurance. And every time I got a raise or a promotion, everything went up. So I would actually work more hours and make way less money because it's just the way that it's skewed. Mm-hmm. Um, once you get a Habitat house, your mortgage is going to be 800, 900, 1,000, whatever it is. It doesn't go up. So you can go for those raises. You can start your own business. You can do whatever you want. Um, you know, we hope if you win the lottery and you win a million dollars, you would sell the house back to someone else who needs it affordable. But really, the sky's the limit with your with your life. You, you kind of can make that leap and go make some more money and make a better life for your family and know that your mortgage is going to stay the same, just like our mortgages. Mm-hmm. And the homeowners, when... Um you know, they have to put sweat equity in the house. So 250 hours for a, an individual adult, but if there's two house, uh, two adults in the house, there's 500 hours that they they're and hammering the nails, and they're they're working alongside volunteers. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, and if people have questions about application or need help, uh, we have staff um, that can help them, and they can answer questions. Applications at habitatcapecod.org can answer anything. Um, you can schedule a meeting with someone to help you. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Do you, do you think there's something of a of a, a moral imperative or some kind of like change to the house when you know that someone else has been having to to drive the nails themselves? Do you think there's some kind of emotional connection with a building like that? I think it's. I'll take it for a second. I think um, it's so empowering to build your house. I can't imagine. So I bought mine as a resale. I can't imagine how it would feel to say to my children, "I built this house for you," mm-hmm. or "Mommy and Daddy built this house." Um, So they put, like Sandra said, their blood, sweat, and tears are in that house. And you see everybody else's as well. So you've got volunteers building alongside the home buyer who are there. It's cold. It's hot. It's whatever it is. We're tired. And they're there every day volunteering, you know, just it's it's just such a lovely. it, it, It really, like, reinforces your faith in humanity, I think. And you just walk away with this just wow there's so many good people in the world it's nice to be reminded of that and um i think it like you said it just um when something breaks in the house as it inevitably will if you have built that house you probably can fix the the railing on the stairs you can fix those little things and you know how to uh do all those little repairs it's very empowering mm-hmm. yeah i mean they're learning skills that they can take with them throughout their life and then a lot of the times um, those homeowners go on to volunteer at other builds for other yeah. homeowners mm-hmm. so it's just we're building this community and the volunteers that work on the homeowner sites you know they have their own community and they're so um, connected to the homeowners and vice versa 
That's very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing about the Habitat for Humanity events upcoming, as well as more about the initiatives that you guys do. That's about all the time that we have, but is there anything else you wanted to highlight for our listeners about volunteering or just other stuff you wanted to touch on that we didn't hit yet? Did we talk about Chatham dedication? We have not. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, So uh, we have two homes being dedicated in Chatham on George Ryder Road South um, on August 21st at 4 p.m. It's a Monday. Um, Our dedication, it's because these two homes are completed and the homeowners will be moving in. Uh, We like to do a celebration to invite everyone in the community and those involved on the build. So please stop by if you're in Chatham um, to see the houses you can do a tour uh, but also um, see what habitat's all about all right awesome thank you both so much for joining me for this conversation we really appreciate it um congratulations with that build as well as uh, good luck into the future with the rest of the busy summer season thank you grady thanks grady i'm grady galane and this has been sunday journal